right, good afternoon everyone. Thanks for being here. Uh, good to see everyone back in person. I'll just run through a few notes here before we uh, get started. We will have a transcript today, so please uh, please speak loudly. Help us with your, uh, with your questions. Uh, Kids Day is tomorrow, uh, starts at noon, doors open at 11. Uh, you should get your credentials if you plan on coming tomorrow, get your credentials from Tracy and Rhonda today and enter at gate D tomorrow. You can be in the East Stands or in the press box, either one uh, for that. Um, our weekly press conferences will start obviously the first, uh, first game week. Our plan right now is to have those a little bit different but still have them. Our players on Tuesdays will probably do those outdoors or maybe if weather makes us go inside, we'll probably do them inside the bubble or the practice facility as opposed to the, the front lobby there. Uh, right now we're planning on Coach Ferentz with his normal uh, Tuesday afternoon uh, press conference in the All-America room. One thing we are going to add this, week, this year on Wednesdays uh, during the season, we will have an assistant coach available for interviews via Zoom. We'll give you more details as we get that all settled, but uh, one, when the coach gets done with practice and has some, a little time, we'll get a coach each, week, each Wednesday via Zoom for any, uh, any questions. Uh, post game will look uh, a lot like it did two years ago with a little bit of change. We'll probably have more of the players at the podium than, and not as many in the room, uh, in a crowded room with full of people. So we'll change that a little bit. All that stuff we'll let you know more as we get um, to game week. <clears throat> Uh, credentials, you should, most of you should have gotten your credentials today. If you haven't uh, applied for credentials, please uh, do so um, as soon as you can. Uh, player requests for that first Tuesday, if you can get those to me by Friday, August 27th, we'll get, get ready to go a little bit before the week starts. Uh, ticket information, ticket sales are good. We're, uh, our season ticket sales are ahead of where they were two years ago. Uh, we've sold out um, the student allotment of 8,700 student tickets are gone. And then um, right now for the opening game, uh, we have about 5,000 tickets remaining for that game. Uh, there's a handout today from the, uh, from the DOT that talks about post-game traffic because of the I-80 and 380 interchange. It's going to be a mess um, post-game, so we appreciate anything you can do to share, help us share that information um, between now and uh, September 4th. Um, some of the changes inside the stadium for this year, obviously, the pilot program with alcohol being served. <clears throat> There's some new plans for fans entering the stadium at the four corners of the stadium. Uh, and then, um, as, as we said, the exit plans for traffic uh, will be different. Um, inside the stadium, everything, along with tickets being digital and parking being digital, the um, concession stands will be uh, cashless. So again, we'll have more information of that uh, as we get towards our first game. And again, appreciate your assistance there. Uh, parking lots will open six hours prior to kick. Uh, for no game will they open before 6 a.m. So a little bit of changing on, on that. And again, with no Hawkeye Express um, this year, uh, reminder to fans that the Hancher and Hawkeye commuter lots remain free um, with CAN bus service. Um, day of game parking can still be pre-purchased uh, through the UI ticket office. So thanks for your um, being here today. We'll get right to coach. Um, appreciate all your uh, coverage, and we'll go from there. Thank you. And uh, silence your phones. It's well synchronized. Very impressive. So, uh, first of all, it's just really good to be here and uh, good to be live and in person with everybody. Appreciate everybody being here. Uh, welcome to Media Day, certainly. Uh, you know, selfishly, this is, uh, this is a really enjoyable time of year to be a football coach. Uh, it's, it's a one block of time, you know, be it usually two and a half sometimes three weeks, where you get, uh, you know, it's just pure football. It's us and our team, and uh, outside of taking the garbage out, I still took the garbage out last Tuesday night. Uh, otherwise, you're pretty much off the hook for everything else going on. So it's, it's one pure time where we uh, are just with the players. Uh, we have their attention for the most part. They're not uh, worried about academics, social life, all those kinds of things. And, um, you know, so it's a really enjoyable part. Uh, of our year. The other part about it, it's really about pure teaching right now, just uh, trying to teach the game, teach fundamentals, and, and see how, how uh, quickly and how, uh, how much we can grow, uh, see what kind of growth and improvement we can have. And that's, 
usually the uh, task in any camp that you have, preseason camp, and it certainly uh, fits our team this year. Uh, like most years, we have a mix of you know veteran players, got a bunch of guys we feel uh, really good about, have a lot of confidence in based on what they've done out on the field already and then what they've done off the field, just the way they do things and uh, the way they continue to, to work out there and lead our football team. And then, you know, needless to say, we lost a lot of really good football players off last year's team. So there's always those holes to fill. And then, you know, a big part of that is just seeing how all the pieces fall together, uh, how guys uh, meld together a little bit, and that, that's a big part of the camp. So uh, that, that's what we're looking at right now. That is the beauty of college football in my mind. Uh, each and every year, say it every January, and it's really true. It's a, a truly a new team. Anytime uh, you, know, you start a new venture, and that began back in January, but this is a really, really important phase. And I, I think, uh, as I mentioned back during spring, too, one thing to just factor in a little bit, coming off a of COVID year where there really wasn't, uh, first of all, there wasn't a spring practice a year ago. Uh, there wasn't a good, consistent, uh, you know, summer training period where uh, guys were, you know, always think about Petrus being, I think he's quarantined 30 plus days last summer, even though he never uh, contracted the virus. So guys missing a lot of time, and this, this is one thing right now, at least we're getting the benefit of uh, a lot of younger guys having a good normal year, at least going back to uh, January 25th or 6th, whenever we began. So uh, that, that's one thing you got to factor in a little bit. Um, you know, this is the start of camp, and, and it's what's really important about it is now for us to figure out what our identity is going to be, see how it shapes, and see how guys are moving along. Uh, you know, and it's day to day. I can assure you that, like it is every year, it's a process, and there are good days, there are bad days. Uh, some days, not the guys aren't trying, but uh, some days it seems. And yesterday was one of those days where a lot of things seem to go wrong. So that's that stuff we have to push through. Uh, we're going to have to do the same thing during the season, and uh, you know we're, we're experiencing that a little bit right now. But uh, today was a little better, better effort. But uh, the bottom line is, you know, we really we won't have a clearer picture probably till uh, you know a week from Wednesday next week. You know, two and a half weeks into it, that's kind of where we get out of a camp mode, if you will, have a better read on our team. And again, I think with all the uh, uh, younger players that we have on our roster, we expect to see a lot of change and uh, growth and development. It's going to be critical for us if we're going to be successful during this period. So that, that's kind of where we're at right now. Uh, the one thing I do feel good about, I know we uh, released the leadership console or the player console this morning. Uh, I feel really good about those 16 players. Those guys are guys that are, uh, have been committed. They've done a great job. Uh, 12 of them are Hawkeye captains, championship captains during our out of season competition. Uh, and, you know, the other four guys are all representative guys at other positions. Wanted to make sure every position was represented. But the 16 of them are all, they have one common bond. They're all really truly committed. Done a great job uh, since January given our guys' leadership. So that, that part's, uh, you know, really encouraging. Um, just a couple notes here. I think, you know, it's good to have a good summer program and have a full one. Uh, so as we entered camp, you know, whatever it was, eight days ago, nine days ago, uh, we came into camp in good shape physically. Uh, you know, if you train hard during the course of the summer, you know, you always have some setbacks, soft tissue things, that type of deal. But as we came into camp, we have a couple guys still recovering from surgeries uh, back in the spring. Uh, confident they'll all be ready to go when game time comes around. Um, Got some guys that have camp injuries right now. You'll see some guys out or won't see some guys out there tomorrow. Uh, you'll notice that. So the guys that aren't out there, uh, basically, you know, we expect them to be ready and we open up the season. Uh, the one exception, uh, the one new addition, the one exception is Kyle Schott, who had a really good summer and unfortunately uh, had an accident or uh, a setback during the course of our guys had a week off before we started last Thursday. He was home helping uh, Bale Hay, and I think he's the first guy, at least in 23 years I can remember, that got injured, uh, Baleen Hay. Uh, jumped off a bale and landed on his foot and uh, had a foot injury. So he's probably going to miss some playing time early in the season. Uh, I can't tell you when, if it'll be second week, third week, fourth week, but we expect him back somewhere in the first portion of the season, but he will not be ready um, early. At least I, I, I think that'd be, a, that'd be a real long shot to expect him to be ready for the first game. And you'll see him, too. He'll be on crutches today, so uh, no need asking that. Um, you know, as far as the schedule, a couple notes about that. I mean, we, we really don't talk much about the schedule. Uh, but, you know, our guys read the paper, and they, they, I think they know who we're playing. Uh, and our guys aren't, aren't stupid either. They're pretty good uh, football minds. So, you know, uh, right now our focus is on our team. That's really where it's at, and that's where it will be for uh, at least another week and a half. And then at some point we'll shift into our first opponent. 
but I think it goes without saying. Uh, one, one thing that's very, very obvious, we play two teams uh, that are highly ranked going into the preseason. Uh, polls uh, very highly ranked and for good reason. They're both coming off uh, historically good seasons. Uh, both teams are, you know, their arrows definitely going up. They got a lot of veteran players coming back on, on uh, both cases. And uh, so we're starting right off with a, a really tough, uh, tough schedule. And then, you know, to me, every game we play is tough and competitive. And that's kind of what it is in college football. Uh, you better have that attitude. You're going to be in for some disappointment, that's for sure. So uh, that, that's just uh, what we're preparing for right now. Uh, I think the bottom line is, you know, it's a, a real thin, uh, you know, razor thin edge or, you know, room edge for margin for error when you, when you talk about playing college football games. And I think this year the uh, margin is even that much thinner. So uh, that's really the mindset that we're going to have to have once we get, uh, get, get focused on opponents. Then the uh, last, last thing of note probably uh, uh, just is the COVID situation. Uh, you know, it really has been our, our main opponent since last March when uh, things started getting shut down at the university and uh, certainly impacted, affected last season. Uh, you know, things have been a lot better this year, but uh, you know, I'm, I'm about nine days out from watching news, thank God. And uh, so anyway, you know, I know there's a lot going on in the country and nobody can predict where it's all going. Uh, I did make a comment back in Indianapolis about our, our situation. I think I said we are in the mid-70s. That, that number's gone up. We continue to educate. That's our number one priority, to educate our players. Uh, about what the protocols are going to be and just, you know, what we all feel is probably in their best interest. Uh, a lot of guys have responded real favorably, and uh, I think uh, when September 1st rolls around, we still have guys that are in the, in the process of getting vaccinated. We have a, uh, at least a handful, if not two tomorrow, that are going to get vaccinated. So when September rolls around, we expect to be in a, a pretty good position. But uh, that remains our players' choice what they choose to do. Uh, we're not going to mandate it, but uh, we are going to continue to educate, and I'd encourage all of our fans to consider doing the same thing. There's nothing any of us want more than to have a full house uh, in Kennedy Kitchen every week, and hopefully everybody will do their part to be part of that. So, uh, you know, feel good about the direction we're going there. And then, you know, uh, one other couple things here I'll just mention. Uh, I don't pretend to be a close personal friend of Coach Bowden. I did actually drive him to a golf outing when I was at Pittsburgh before I came here in 1981. Uh, we had played him in uh, the fall of 80. And then uh, he came in and played at a golf tournament. Coach Cheryl hosted, so I drove him from the airport to uh, Fox Chapel Field Club Golf Course. It's the extent of my knowledge with him. I've known a lot of people that do, did know him and know him well, and I've never heard a bad, bad word said about Coach Bowden. As a young coach, I can tell you this. He's one of the people I really admired. Uh, when you looked at what they did during when he went to Florida State, Florida State had a very average program at that time. And, you know, they went on the road. Not only did they play, you know, really good teams, they went on the road and did it because people wouldn't go to Tallahassee and didn't have to. So back in those days, he, he would take their team and travel. And they had a lot of really marquee wins. And they did it in a real impressive uh, fashion. I remember watching on TV, whether it was at Stanford, uh, Lincoln, or, you know, uh, Columbus. A lot, a lot of really impressive victories. And then we had the uh, pleasure, that's the only game we lost in 1980, it was in Tallahassee. Tremendous environment, but they were a tremendously well-coached football team. We, we had better talent, I can tell you that right now. Uh, we had better talent, but they beat us that day, and that was, uh, that, was our, that was a night game. That was our only loss that season, so I've always had great respect and admiration, and certainly, uh, you know, send condolences to everybody that uh, is in the family and, you know, played with them in the program. So, I want to say that, and um, the other thing is just, you know, just uh, one other thing, I guess, in my notes here. Preseason honors, I think it's great. I guess we've had a couple guys recognized. Probably could guess those guys if I uh, paid attention. But, you know, it's really nice. It's a nice compliment for, for the work that the guys have done so far. But, you know, preseason polls and, and awards are kind of like, you know, polls, right? They really don't matter a lot. And, you know, we're kind of all those guys that got mentioned, and hopefully other guys can enter the fray uh, to play their best this fall. That's what it's all about. So we're, we're eager to get started, certainly eager to be in Kinnick tomorrow and honor, uh, you know, uh, the kids' captains. We're going to do it in a little different way uh, per request of the hospital folks, which is perfectly understandable and commonsensical. So but we'll still uh, have a chance to celebrate and honor those folks and all the kids that show up. And hopefully uh, our guys will respond to having a crowd out there. So it'll be good to be, be back in Kinnick and in front of people. And uh, with that, I'll open it up for comments or any questions. Coach, you've been here 20 years now. What motivates you? What gets you out of bed in the morning? Is it the teaching part, the getting the teams to get better, combination of watching the players grow? 
Yeah, probably all, all of the above. I mean, this is what what coaches like is coaching. So, uh, and, the, and the you know best part about coaching is being with your players and the staff, the people you work with, everybody in the building. I got a tremendous support staff. There, there are so many people involved if we're going to have a good operation. And uh, uh, I mean, everybody. You know, standard thinking about. Uh, there's a book I read this this past year. I've, I'm not reading as much as I need to, but uh, my case wrote a book about Never Enough, and he mentioned in there about uh, one of my favorite parts. I was, I was commenting to Mike about this the other day. Uh, President Kennedy asked the, asked the janitor at NASA like what his role was, and he says, "We're you know I'm helping try try put somebody on the moon." And I think about Doug, uh, who's our lead custodian, Philippe. We got people in there that are really committed to taking care of our building. I just throw that out. Um, you know, that, that's kind of teamwork that you know we have over there. Uh, there are a lot of people behind the scenes helping our guys get ready. And uh, then the hard work is for the players. You know, the real hard work. But uh, there's so many people involved, and that's that's the fun of it all. So. Um, you know, it's good to have a break, and it's also good to be back at it a little bit. And I just got to figure out a way not to have to take the garbage out. I don't have it all figured out here, but that haven't figured that one out yet. What, where does the office line sit now with, with Kyler out? Is is Justin Britt healthy? And then what's kind of your tackle situation? Yeah, so Justin, yeah, he jumped right in there and played uh, the right guard position. And you, you never want injuries to happen, but that. That is a good reminder for all of us that this, you know, I tell our team all the time, this could happen anytime, whether it's, uh, it could be a Friday of a, uh, before a game. You just never know. So people have to be ready. And yeah, Justin Britt's jumped in there. But both of our lines right now, uh, we've got some really good players up front on both sides, but we also have a bunch of guys that haven't played much. Justin would be in that category. Uh, and he's missed a lot of time. I say a lot of time, significant time during the course of his career in injury. So that, that's kind of, uh, it's tough to get better when you're not out working, but the good news is right now he's gotten a lot of quality work in these uh, seven or eight days that we've practiced, and uh, every snap is so valuable for him, and, and that bleeds into the other guys that uh, haven't played. I think Justin's a guy uh, like the young, you know, like the guys that are rotating the tackle. We've got basically a rotation going with Plum. Um, you know, Mason's in that rotation, uh, DeYoung and uh, Colby. You know, those guys are all young guys that haven't played much, and every snap is important. But uh, we're, we're, I don't, I don't want to use the word unsettled, but really don't have any idea. I couldn't tell you who's going to be starting when we get the season going here. Have a better idea, you know, when we have our press conference before the game, who's going to be at least the two deep. But right now it's wide open, I think, for everybody to compete. And it's pretty much the same one on the defensive line. You know, I expect Van Balkenberg, I expect Linderberg, Linder, Linderbaum to be in their plan, right? But after that, it's, you know, it's wide open. Yep. Coach well, Trent, who is your uh, number one field goal kicker coming this season, or do you know yet? I'm just yeah, curious. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so it's, it's, uh, it's an interesting situation. I think we're probably about as veteran as we've been um, at the specialist position. Usually, you know, we have some question marks there. And I know Caleb wasn't our starter, but we feel like he was. It, it literally, and I've been saying this for two years, it literally was just, you know, almost flipping a coin between he and Dunk. They, they, they've practiced, especially last year, they were just like on each other's tails, you know. I mean, they were really close. And there are some things Caleb did a little better maybe than Keith. So, um, you know, he's been here, I think, six years. I think this is his sixth year. I've lost track. He's been here a long time, but he really performs well in practice. Did a nice job on kickoffs. and. You know, I've got total confidence he'll play like a veteran player for us. So we really feel like he is a returning starter. Tori obviously is. Charlie at the return position. And uh, we're going to start, you know, working on kickoff returns here probably next week. But guys are fielding them in practice. And we think, you know, we think we have guys. We're, we're going to have a good, we're losing a really good guy at the mirror. But we feel like we have a bunch of guys that are going to have a chance to emerge. So that, that is one position on our team where we feel like we've got, you know, we've got a pretty solid situation. But yeah. the NCAA practice guidelines changed back in May, limiting some of those yeah. full padded practices. How have you adapted with that scheduling uh, and scheduling your practices this fall camp? Well, we're ahead of the NFL. I talked to my son yesterday, and uh, I think they had had four padded practices and played last night, um, which to me seems ludicrous, but what do I know? That's probably why I'm in college instead of the NFL. Uh, but, you know, it, it hasn't dramatically changed anything we're doing. Uh, if I could make one suggestion, I'm not making a complaint. I'm making a suggestion, taking a little more positive approach to this whole situation. Uh, I think the next step, in, and the SEC was on this this spring, just give us a little bit more time to practice. Um, you know, if we truly care about players' well-being and safety and recovery and all that kind of thing, which I, I think we've seen a lot of improvements the last 15 years that way, 
that that's the next step I think they could take. Um, you know, I have the luxury of coaching at a Big Ten university where uh, we have a little bit more flexibility in our budget than I did than we did when I was at the University of Maine. And to me, I see no downside because if you're coaching at Maine, you may not get those couple three extra days because your budget won't allow you to. But I think here it would be a really good thing for our players. I think we'd have better quality practices. And you know, one thing about camp, you want you want to push the guys a little bit, and you want to have them tired and a little bit fatigued. That that's part of camp. That's part of preseason. But you also. I think want want to make sure you really have quality and you want to give them good recovery time. So I, I can tell you right now, well, there's no way we can. I think we're down to whatever 25 practices or 24, or whatever it is. We're not we're not going to hit the max. We can't, in my mind, and do it well. So we'll, we'll give up one practice, and um, you know that's the way it is. But um, you want you want to keep your team well too and be able to to do the things you have to do. So that'd be my one suggestion for the NCAA to consider. Slightly, I can just. To, Think about it. Yeah. Fair, you lose Six years later, later, we'll get it done. Yep. You, you lose a couple of big pieces of wide receiver from last year. I'm, I'm going to go back. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, you're good. I'm, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take credit for something, okay? So um, I've done two things in 23 years, okay, that actually are in the books now. Uh, we actually have, they'll review kickoffs, right, onside kickoffs after we've gotten the short end of two of those. And I've got, you know, murdered, obviously, because, you know, what are they doing? Well, we got, we got screwed on an illegal play. Uh, but at least now they can review those. So that's one thing. And then I don't know if you guys noticed, this year they slipped the, pa the spider pads, they call them spider or whatever, right? We call them shells. They slipped that in very discreetly. Anybody notice that? When you have, so, you know, I've been advocating for that for I don't know how many years. Probably more than six. So maybe, how old am I right now? 66. You know, if I'm 75, we'll probably, Get those extra days. So anyway, I'm on a tangent. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, you lose some key pieces of wide receiver from a year ago. Tyrone's obviously the number one, but behind yep. that, who are you looking at as that stepping up into some of those key roles? Yeah, that's that's a great question. That that's uh, mentioned both lines. So those were obvious things to talk about. And then the other area right now is yeah, when you have two guys like Amir and Brandon go to the NFL, um, you know, those are two big holes. And you know, luck, whatever it is, but uh, two of the guys that, that came in January, uh, you know, the younger guys, both Keegan and Arlen, have really done a nice job. Uh, Keegan got a little boo boo yesterday, so I don't think he'll work tomorrow. We'll see. You know, we're not ruling him out yet, but he couldn't go today. But he's he's done a really nice job, and uh, did a nice job in the spring. And Arlen's done the same thing. And, and when I say nice job, they're doing a nice job on the field, but they're also um, really they've been impressive in in regard to. Just the way they've kind of handled everything, and everybody comes in differently. Uh, everybody has a different way to reacting to the loads of, you know, taking uh, 14, 15 hours to, you know, the workouts, the practice, all those things that you do in the spring and then this summer. And uh, the both of them have so far just kind of taken it on uh, or in stride. Really haven't seen them have a meltdown or anything like that yet, and yeah, that part's been pretty impressive. So. They're, they're definitely in the picture. Um, you know, we, we consider Nico Regani to be a starter. Charlie Jones is, was, was a really good returner last year. He's made strides as a receiver and done a lot of good things. Uh, a couple of young guys out at the, the uh, X position, Desmond uh, Hudson and then uh, Jackson Ritter are both, both making strides. And Brody Brecht is now with us. Uh, you know, he had a thumb injury today. So you're going to see him probably wrapped up to at the uh, media day. Uh, he'll be out for a while. But and he's a little bit behind just because he's been playing, you know, really focused on his baseball and rightfully so. So um, I, I think we have a, a healthy group. Uh, Jack Johnson's another guy that's caught our eye, walk on, young walk on guy from uh, Des Moines. It's done a really nice job. So you know, we're just going to let it play out and see see what happens. And you know, we're, we're not there yet, but at least I think we're, we're going in the right direction with that group. Yep. Kurt, what's your team for this team to have a healthy guy? What would it mean for this team to have a healthy guy with Kelly Martin? Well, it's going to help us a lot, and he's really looked good in practice. You know, uh, first of all, he's a veteran player; he really knows how to play. And just like I kind of mentioned about those younger guys, uh, these guys, you know, uh, Ivory's a veteran player, but he clearly knows how to operate and just how to do things. He's uh, he's been a really good leader on our football team. He does it in a very quiet way, but he's just really, really good with our entire football team. He's also really good in that room because uh, it's a fairly young group. Uh, you know, Tyler's played a lot, but he's still a younger guy, a third-year guy. So uh, that gives us a good, strong, I think, one-two punch. He's come off the injury. We were very cautious with him through uh, spring and through the summer. 
but he seems to be uh, full speed right now and really doing well. So we'll be smart about getting him to the season. And uh, both he and Tower have played a lot of football. We're, like we've done with other backs that have been tackled in games, they're not going to get tackled much in practice. It's just I don't see any need for that. But we'll we'll get them ready. Yep. Yeah. Since we did it, seen an uptake in vaccines or vaccinations from your players. Is that, is that a concern still at this point for you? For yeah, apparently that was a big big talking point out there in the, the uh, public, which uh, I guess it is everywhere. And that, that's the sad part about all this stuff. It's, it's become... Uh, Good news is I'm back to work, so I don't have to listen to any of those stations. Uh, it's just, you know, it's such a polarizing, like everything is so polarizing right now and what we're doing. Um, you know, and there, I, I have heard one, and I'm sure there's way more than this, I've heard really one compelling reason why one person uh, has chosen not to. I mean, I fully get it and I understand and, you know, so I'm not a big one for judging other people, but for, for where, where it's different for us is, you know, we're all involved in a team activity and, um, there's, it's kind of twofold as I look at it, whether you're a coach or a player. You know, you only get limited opportunities as a coach. You only get limited opportunities as a player. Players' windows are a lot smaller. And um, so, you know, that's pretty precious time. And to, to give it up for, you know, if you sprain your ankle, that, that's sorry. Nobody can do anything about that. But for something that might be avoidable, um, that's a deal. And, and let me preface that to you by saying that, um, you know, I realize like nothing's foolproof as far as vaccinations, but I, I do know, at least at this point, if you're vaccinated, you're, you're free from contact trace, which is huge. And that, that's where that was the thing we really had to deal with last year. So I think there's a lot of advantage to that. And, um, you know, so that's a deal. And then the second component of that is it not only impacts you, but it impacts the whole team, just like anything any of us do involved with the program. And uh, I'm not saying there's a response. There is a responsibility of being part of a team or part of an organization. Uh, I'm not putting that on in the, the vaccine vaccinations quite in that category because again, there might be compelling reasons. But um, you know, when you're part of a team, you know, whatever you do, whatever happens to you impacts everybody else. That's a reality. So just you know, I've asked all of our guys to consider that a little bit and uh, you know, keep it in mind as they make the decisions. Oh, did Joe Evans. Just follow the path a lot of guys have in the program. Comes as a walk on with no promises. What did he do to, in your eyes, to earn that scholarship? First of all, and then secondly, how does it make you feel as a head coach to tell a young man he's on scholarship? Yeah, it's funny. I, I uh, you know, I listen to the radio come, coming home and uh, going home and coming to work, and that was on on the radio this morning. They were talking about the BYU um, NIL deal, and uh, I actually got thinking about that. I guess you know. People are doing creative videos and all that kind of stuff. And I, I normally had just told guys independently. Uh, I remember telling a couple, three guys in the in the locker room over at Lincoln two years ago. Uh, Kyle Rashad was in that group, I believe, uh, last spring or last fall. Excuse me, three more guys, I think. And then uh, that was one of the I don't want to call it a complaint, but a suggestion from our yeah suggestion, right? Like the NCAA, it was a suggestion suggestion from one of our guys said, you know, why don't you why don't you announce it to everybody, the whole team. Uh, and so, you know, Nick DeYoung was the most recent guy. Uh, Joe was last last December, I guess. Uh, but yeah, so you know, we don't do any creative videos or you know, any of that stuff. Nobody jumps out of a cake and hands a scholarship paper to guys. Uh, but it, it's a great feeling. It's really a great feeling, mainly because you're just, you know, uh, saying thanks to somebody who's really demonstrated the the, you know, uh, taking the initiative and really doing a great job. And Joe. Joe, Joe has just been going hard ever since he got here. He just has such a high motor. And then the question was, you know, is he going to be big enough to do some things and all that? But, you know, I remember out here, I'm just thinking the Minnesota game in 09, or 19, 09, geez. Uh, 19, you know, he, he helped uh, give us a little juice out there. And he's just one of those guys. He just goes hard. Everything he does is first class. So uh, and he just continues to keep getting better and better. So it's, it's, fun. it's fun to watch those guys develop and grow. Coach, on defense, you've turned a lot of experienced players on the back end. How does Xavier Williams fitting into that puzzle? Yeah, you know, he's still feeling his way. He's almost, he's not a, a first year guy because he's way older and a lot more experienced, but he basically missed everything in the spring, unfortunately. And it just takes time to get used to the terminology, all the techniques, those types of things. But he's an unbelievable young guy, really impressive guy. Um, and he's, you know, he's learning every day. So we're, He's one of the guys I'm anxious to see where he's at here in 12, you know, 12 days, see if he can get into the mix a little bit. We do have a little depth on that, I was going to say issue, but it's, it's a good thing right now. We've got some depth in the back end. That's probably our most veteran position if you look at all, all four positions together. But hopefully he's going to help uh, make us stronger. He's a great young guy. Yeah. Coach, you mentioned those, those first two weeks playing against teams that are coming off the main. Um, you talked about 
top 20 team. Do you remember that in the start of the season? That's, he has died in the deep and had hard with two like that. And what kind of pressure does that put on these next couple of weeks? Here? You guys um, yeah, I think top 15, I think, at least that's what somebody told me, so I'll buy it. Uh, they're both really good teams. So, yeah, like I said, the mar margin for error is always, always tight, and, um, you know, we, we traditionally have, you know, not always been sharp early, or at least, you know, where we need to be last year is a good example of that. So it, it just, you know, it's a good reminder for all of us, you know, that we, we don't have time to waste, and, uh, you know, not everybody's going to, every day's going to be perfect, but we, we need to be working hard. We need to be trying to improve, and then, you know, um, at some point we're going to have to figure out how the pieces of the puzzle go together. And, you know, we, we talk about in spring, we're not really worried about cohesion as much as just individual growth. We're kind of still in that individual growth period. But at some point we're going to have to start putting it together and, and making things look, you know, harmonious. And, um, you know, it, it's really going to be true this year because, you know, nobody can guarantee both those teams are going to be playing at a top level, but I, I would imagine that's going to be the case. So we've we got to be ready. Both, both of them have veteran quarterbacks to start with that that have played really well. So that, that's a good starting point for them. And, um, you know, but we we got to be ready. Last year, Corey Taylor showed a lot of consistency. Um, how big is it having a punter you can trust in? And is there a point where punters you'd be considered for a Heisman the way he was on the last year? <laughs> Probably means you're, you've. Uh, You've really been, you know, playing conservatively if that happens. Uh, Reggie Roby would have been a candidate, you know, in 1981. He, he fit just so well who we were. Like, we had a really stout defensive team. Uh, we were more ball control and offense. And then, you know, Reggie just, you know, we just kept getting field position. At some point, we'd score. Um, hopefully, we're not in that situation. But you never know. But it's, it's punters are really, uh, you know, just so valuable, so valuable. And, Part of the best thing about him is it's kind of like the, the the wave, you know, the wave just happened and it was pure and it was, you know, just not commercialized, all that stuff. I mean, the fact that Tory never played a football game, American football game, until we were in West Lafayette makes the story that much better in my mind. And probably, probably the biggest surprise for me was his ability to the plus 50 punting. It just, you know, that I didn't expect that. I really didn't. I thought maybe that might be an issue, actually, but it became a strength of his. So. He's got a great attitude. He just he's he's improved. He's in better shape now. He's been in the program for over a year, and he just uh, he's got a great attitude. You know, he's just and he's non-commercialized, at least as far as I know. I mean, he's just kind of a every day. He just really appreciates the whole the whole deal. Coach, you mentioned uh, Brody Breck playing baseball this summer, and I know that's something that you've uh, encouraged uh, with the Iowa kids in that playing summer baseball the year. Tyler Linderbaum did. Even back to Joseph Tool did. What makes you so open to uh, Iowa kids still playing uh, with their high school teams in the summer as compared to getting them on campus? I, I just think uh, there, there's benefit to guys coming in January, and I think the, the, the two receivers have certainly, they, they illustrate that or they're, you know, illustrations of that. Uh, Connor Colby, I mentioned earlier, and, you know, throw him in that mix too. He's, he's really, he's in the mix of things right now. He's competing for playing time, and uh, there's no question that's helped those guys advance a little bit. But, you know, typically when I talk to recruits, and maybe, maybe this is old-fashioned, but I just tell them, you know, really the bottom line is it's about your last three years on campus. Those are going to be your best years. And if you're a fifth-year player or a four-year player, uh, Desmond King being a four-year guy, my, my point is, like, you know, whenever you play that first year, you're, you know, it's going to be new to you. You're going to be feeling your way around a little bit, and some guys handle that better than others. But, you know, all, all of us, I think, you know, if you're a good player, you enjoy those last couple of years better more because you're just like high school. You're, you know the drill. You you know, you're kind of at the top of the uh, the heap, and that's kind of fun. It's fun to play that way and be competitive. Um, and I always use jo Josie as an example. It didn't seem to retard his, his career or growth or anything else. And uh, the thing that hurt him that year was he busted his hand. I think that was his first camp. He had a broken bone in his hand. But he came in. He's a football player, and he, he did just fine. So... Um, you know, and I, I just I think there's, you know, it, it's good to enjoy your high school experience. I know that that's going like everything else. You know, that, that's kind of going by the wayside a little bit right now. But uh, it's, those are fun times. You know, it's, if you're you like playing athlete, you know, athletics, that's a fun time. So why not do it? It's the last chance you're going to get. And uh, you know, it's hard to do two sports in college. It really is. Now he he may have an opportunity because, but that that's a good match as being a pitcher and a baseball like that works. I think you know, but. If he's going to be a hitter or something like that, that's really difficult. You know, I'm not saying you can't do it, but why not? Why not enjoy that? And I, I feel the same way about your college career. Why not maximize and enjoy it? But 
that, that's a personal choice too. Yeah. a year ago was uh, and really the thing that pushed me that that there was two separate uh, requests to do it uh, the Wednesday last Wednesday of May and you know one was a veteran guy one was a younger guy and it just impacted me like okay it's everybody like you know, it's not just you know this group or that group it's young guys old guys uh, so I guess I've entered this uh, millennium a little bit and uh, you know, it, it's like parenting uh, you know so let, let's open it up you know we, we let them talk to the media and you, know, you can get in more trouble doing that than anything, right? So, um, and let's not, why not, why don't we just shift our attention to, to education and do a better job that way? Uh, and let our guys, you know, be, be responsible for what they do. And they, they are in everything else they do. I mean, they can make a lot of bad decisions in other areas. Uh, but, it, but the biggest thing is just like anything else, if you act on emotion, uh, if you react, uh, those, are, those are bad things to do in life typically, no matter what, you know, unless you're, like out there playing, that, that's something different. But even then, it's, it's usually probably gets you in trouble if you just are overreactive or over emotional about something. It's it's a bad deal. So yeah, we just shifted our focus. Yep. Hey, coach, how has Xavier Woods benefited to things? And as our clock, the second string open practice, he wasn't um, practicing, but I know that he mentioned earlier that it's all good for you guys. Xavier, so, yeah. So yeah, he missed everything in the spring. You know, he he's able to go through the pro, the winter program. But, but had an injury that really kind of, uh, and then he, you know, he jumped out of the, uh, the gym, you know, uh, after spring ball. So he was feeling a little bit better. But, you know, the biggest thing for him right now is just, just getting a feel of how we play and how we do things. Everybody does things differently. So uh, it's like any, any new player to our team. Uh, you know, Van Valkenburg went through the same thing. You go right down the list. Anybody that's joined the team, Heflin last year, uh, you know, there, there's a learning curve that you have to go through and you, you can do so much in the summertime but really it's it's being out there at practice and getting in the system and and getting a chance and uh, we'll, we'll have plenty of work between now and uh, the first game where he can you know hopefully make make some impact yeah the first thing I'll, I'll just start out by saying you uh, if you could watch practice, which you can't, because I'm not going to let you, but you can, you can watch tomorrow, uh, but we'll watch how much he does. But uh, the first thing I appreciate about him is just his energy and the way he practices. And that, that's something with every player. And we've got a lot of guys like this that, that uh, are good players. You know, he's a good player. He's already shown that and demonstrated that. But he practices really well. He's got a good energy, you know, good effort, good, just everything he does is quality. So. That, that sets such a good example, and, and on top of it, it makes him a better player. So he's, you know, he's more experienced now. He's a little bigger, a little stronger, probably in a little better condition than he would have been as a young guy. And, uh, you know, I don't know how, how well he can do this year, but he's certainly one of the guys we're counting on. Uh, and we've got, you know, Ivory right there with him. And I'll, I'll throw this in there, too. The, the two younger guys have both uh, done a nice job. Gavin's done a good job. And uh, Leishon's one of the guys, you know, we're early into it right now, but he caught our eye in the spring. Uh, he's better in pads than he is in shorts, quite frankly, which the game gets played in pads. That's a good thing for him. Uh, and he's, he's off to a good start this, uh, uh, this, this camp thus far. So uh, that, that's a pretty, you know, the, the group's been really good. The tower's right at the front of it and done a really, really nice job. Yep. Ending the season on, on the winning streak you did, does that in any way like, boost expectations or morale, or do you see that carry over at all as you kind of head into the season? Yeah, I hope it does. Um, but, you know, it's just we're, we're a different team right now, and we have to find our, our niche. And um, um, I, I think, you know, the bigger picture is, you know, we, we've pretty, pretty much had pretty good success on the field. Uh, and I'd say wins and losses. I mean, we haven't, haven't really – just been out of games very much in the last five, six years. So hopefully, you know, the guys that have been in the program understand that, you know, there's a level we have to be at each and every week if we're going to compete. Not that we've won every game, but we've, we've uh, been in a lot of close games. And uh, first of all, if we're doing it right, we'll be in more close games. And then secondly, the whole key is getting it over the, over the hill enough to win and find in some way, whether it's offensively, defensively, or on special teams. So, you know, the guys have, you know, we got a lot of illustrations to point to, and that, that part's healthy. But then, you know, the flip side is, you know, every week's a new week, and every team's a new team, but every week's going to be a new week. And, 
you know, even that first week, you know, I, I, I kind of know like what Indiana's got and kind of know what we got, but I really don't know what they got. I mean, there's, there's a lot of things that could happen up there this month and a lot of things that could happen here too. So it's just, you know, it's just you, you got to keep your focus on what it is you're doing and uh, that, that's all we can worry about and control. So, but yeah, your past always is a, it's a good teaching point. Whether you did well or poorly, you know, it's just something we can draw upon and learn from hopefully. I'm sorry. Uh, no, but I saw some highlights when I got home, and uh, looked like a lot of balls got hit in the cornfield. All right, I mean there, there's like three. Or, I don't know. Nice, nice guy. I saw the you know. They, in fact, yeah, I think it was on the news or it was on the, my iPad, ESPN highlights or whatever. No, it was on the news. I, I threw a trend TV when I got home, so yeah, it was pretty cool. It looked like looked like I me. Mean, it was that, how cool is that, right? That, that's really neat. That's really neat. I, don't know, I hope everybody liked it, but yeah, wish I could have gone, but. Kind of tied up in August. It's tough. But yeah, that's cool. I think it's really cool. So, okay. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Uh, practice field. Coaches will be out there. Players, uh, players after that. So.